One of the things that's really important when it comes to APIs is the ability to evolve and change them over time. And how to document that is actually one of the challenging aspects, so to speak, if you do that with some uh, regularity. And today we have uh, Bianca Lyle of MongoDB here talking to us about how to do that. Hey, Bianca, thanks for joining. Hey, thanks for having me here. Yeah, I ran into you, so to speak, because I was looking at this one tool, OAS Div, that we'll uh, talk about in more detail today, that has the ability to create diffs and change logs. And MongoDB has this really nice documentation, which we'll, of course, link that makes change logs very easily usable. So you're part of MongoDB's API X teams, which by the way, is a great name. I love that name. <laughs> Can you tell us just a little bit what you do in that API X team and how you got into looking into that specific tool? Sure. So yeah, uh, API X, we call it, uh, we have three teams at the moment and I'm part of one of them. And yeah, we, since I joined, I joined like two years ago and the team was brand new as to say, and we all started basically looking into the experience for the product programmatic users of the Atlas admin API. So anything that comes after the API, whatever we can improve the experience, it's kind of our focus. Uh, we focus on empowering the experience for the users. So. Some of the things we have built so far are breaking changes detection, versioning of the Atlas Admin API, generation of change logs, and Golang SDK uh, automatic generation using OpenAPI. I think the first, the very first thing we try to do is that we had this huge application with some endpoints, and we wanted to have our own OpenAPI specs. So what we actually did is we start annotating. This was a huge effort with the docs teams as well in within MongoDB. So yeah, we started with OpenAPI. Basically, we really wanted to have our own OpenAPI specs, and that just led us into a lot of effort. Together with the docs team within MongoDB, we went ahead and we documented, annotated all the endpoints uh, that we had, and then we created our OpenAPI spec. And from there, that's where we started to build those tools that I mentioned about. We started to be able to generate, to detect breaking changes, generating change log. Use that for our own versioning strategy in the team. And we are continuously uh, creating more things on top of the open API specs as of now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. So one thing, even though we're not talking about that today mostly, but I'm just curious. So I know that OAS diff comes with kind of an opinionated model of what a breaking change is or is not, and you can tweak it and, and, and so forth. How much have you changed in terms of what OAS diff things is a breaking change? Are you using the out of the box model or have you made any changes to that? Well, we did do a few changes. So basically I added some things that we call optional checkers to OAS diff because there were things, for example, I just told you, right? We create SDKs from the open API spec. So sometimes things are that are not breaking changes for a client may be breaking changes for our generation tool. So we actually want to be a bit more strict if we can, so that we can make sure that when you as an engineer are doing a change to our API, you are not going to block the generation of the SDKs and the, all the integrations that come after that. So we did do some changes um, and thankfully we were able to collaborate with OSDIF and add those as optional checkers, right? So basically if there is something that you are open and about, you can just uh, make it optional in the tool. Uh, okay, yeah, that's because there's this interesting thing and I'll, I'll link to it from here. Uh, you know, Hiram's law, this idea that any change is a breaking change if you only have enough consumers because no matter what you change somebody will depend on it and then yeah. just you know just stop working right so so it's really it's a it's a very kind of it's a very fine scale of how strict do you want to be and, and but it's interesting yeah. to see that you very specifically looked at like what what is important for us right like for example we cannot break our code generation which is probably a good idea <laughs> yes for sure <laughs> And then there's the second aspect to it, which is the change log, which I think came a little later for OAS Diff, if I recall correctly. 
and and, yeah. and you're also also using that and we have a very nice example where you have this documentation page that that users can go to and they can interactively compare versions and really look at what changed between this version and that version for for that resource right so it's it, i think it's a great way of packaging everything can you tell us a little bit how this thing works? So in terms of, you know, do you get all of this out of the box or how much of this is actually kind of OAS diff and how much is homegrown by uh, MongoDB? Oh, yeah. So this is, uh, this was a great collaboration with OS diff, uh, because when we used OS diff, we started OS using OS diff for breaking changes and they actually had a diff tool that would give you like a json file with some de detail the change detailing the changes in a json format so it was really not ready for human consumption right and then we discussed with um, ruben and we opened issues and we had meetings with them and we kind of mentioned like what it was that we needed out of the tool and we we thought there was potential in the tool as well like to have this implemented and we reached to an agreement we opened a bunch of prs me and my colleagues um to the tool which basically would get the diffs get the changes that happened and transform them into human readable lines of text let's say so out of the box from OSD, if you can, as of now, uh, pick two specs, get the difference of them in bullet points, let's say, that just say endpoint X, remove the response request by, uh, response uh, property that was optional or anything of the sort. Is Everything is really uh, human readable. There were some tweaks that we added, of course, as part of using OSDIF. So we built on top of that. Um, we added some improvements, uh, like squashing of some of the changes, because we didn't have what you have, like a huge list of similar changes. We prefer to squash them. This is probably something we can in the future contribute to OSDIF. We also have this, have had to restructure the output OS diff into something that is uh, related to versions, because as I told you last year, we developed the versioning engine and it's very specific to us. So we really wanted to make sure that, you know, every change is tied into a version, like where did that ha change happen? That's important to us, right? So it means that we need to run OS diff more than once. We need to, to compare the versions and everything. And that requires like some extra implementation on our side. And also like the whole page and the, the interactive options is all work of our docs team as well, who helped us uh, achieve that final solution. Yeah, and that one looks really nice. I, I really would like to encourage everybody to just briefly check it out. Of course, we will link it from here. Because to me, that was always like the holy grail, so to speak, right? Where I could say, I developed against this version. The current version is that. So I really yeah. want to see just for myself what changed between where I am and where the product is right now. And, and you yeah. did that. And I think it's great. But like you said, so this is a little extra effort. <laughs> this is not <laughs> out of the box. But yeah. um, so... But I think, you know, in terms of developer experience, that is probably as good as it gets. Or are there any... Like, or in your mind, if you could, if you would have sort of free reign, what else would you do? Or would you say, you know, like, this is as good as it gets? Or do you have any kind of ideal plans that you would want to see? I mean, for now, in our change log, at least, there are some basically just text that I wanted to improve a little bit because I think there is still a bit of open API wording in the output. So that's definitely something I would like to to contribute to OS diff so that we can improve, like for example, not mentioning one off, you know, like some of the entries, they will show you the one off property changed. And I don't think that's really necessary for, you know, the the customer, right? They just want to know which fields change it. So you don't really need to go into so much detail. Yeah, I think that one is a good one because in the end, it, it requires you to know a little bit about OpenAPI and JSON schema. And if you don't know that, maybe it's not that meaningful to you. So yeah, that's a good point. It's like really just talk about the changes and not about the technology that that's yeah. un underneath that tool. 
But for now, I think it's really cool. Um, and yeah, if, if you want to do something like that, right, check out OAS Diff. It's a great tool. And, and by the way, thanks to Ruven for connecting me and Bianca. So <laughs> that was really good. And I think it's a great example for how you can create better documentation, better API experiences. And um, thanks a lot, Bianca, for joining today. Thank you so much. It was great. I hope everyone gets to use the tool, contribute to the tool. It's really close to my heart. I really enjoyed collaborating with the, the guys there. So thanks a lot. So check it out. We'll make all the links available from the description. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And until next time, keep getting APIs to work. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>